engine mounts are interesting components. They're interesting components because they need to support the engine, they need to absorb vibration from the engine, they need to protect the engine from the road, and also they need to mitigate against the twisting motion of the engine when we accelerate, and again, the untwisting motion of the engine when we decelerate. Because I've recently changed the engine mount on my vehicle, I was curious to understand how these components work. And guess what? I took one apart and tried to make sense of all of this. This is the result of that. And this is our discussion regarding engine mounts. Engine mounts are and usually will be some of the last components that we consider changing on a vehicle. However, their impact on the overall drivability of the vehicle is something quite big. I'm able to say this because I've put off changing the engine mount for quite a long time and recently got to do it and the overall result was one that amazed me. So doing a bit of research, we can describe the engine mounts to or we can allocate different levels of refinement for the engine mounts based on their evolution. At first, we had very simplistic engine mounts, something that would have been a rubber component sandwiched between some metal plates. That was all that technology had to offer. As technology has evolved, as engineers came up with more interesting solutions, we reach level number two in our engine mount evolution, a point where we are mixing metal rubber and a third little thing, which is a fluid. Kind of scientists discovered that when fluid passes through different cavities, it introduces friction losses. These friction losses are proportional with different factors. However, one of the biggest components of this friction loss is regarding the speed of our fluid. So long story made short, if we have our nice little oil that needs to pass through a fluid because the engine mount is doing that little thing, when this thing is happening, there is a friction loss. The faster it is happening, the characteristics will be proportional to this. At this point in time, we are having an engine mount that has a more dynamic and a more adaptive capability to the type of vibrations that it is able to withstand and able to mitigate against. Basic, a little bit more complex, but engineers kind of decided that this is not enough. We want a even more, uh, we want an even higher level of control. And if we consider these older settings as passive, they introduced something called an active engine mount, an active engine mount system, which now will feature the rubber element, the hydraulic that works on that principle, and they devised a way of being able to bypass our friction generator with a bigger chamber, and all of a sudden, we're able to have different characteristics. We're able to have the supporting characteristic of rubber. We are able to have the soft uh, characteristic of that rubber. We are able to have a harder setting based on the hydraulics that are in our system. But should we want to bypass the harder setting, we actuate our system, be it vacuum, be it electronic, all sorts of technical solutions will be available up there. And we are able to have a different characteristic to our engine mounts. We are starting to be able to answer those requirements of an engine mount quite precisely. We're able to have more solution to different engine problems. Okay, level one, level two, level three, just to bring the discussion and to introduce the fact that there is this technology out there when cost is not a factor anymore on very, very high priced vehicles, as an example, the Porsche, there might be an engine mount which will feature a magnetic fluid 
and providing that you have a system of generating a magnetic field, you're able to adjust the dampening characteristics to an even higher extent. So you will not have only two settings, soft and harsh or harder, you will have many points in between. And reading the BMW literature, we find out that these engine mounts on the BMW are designed to, to do the following things. They're designed to go from soft to hard once the RPM goes over 1050. And also they are designed to go back to soft from hard at 950. I couldn't not do it. I took apart the engine mount. Let's take a look at exactly how they are constructed. We have this little bit, metal on the top, the rubber construction, the support material. After that, we continue with this little holder, which is featuring that concept that I've introduced. So this little one will be the place where the fluid will pass through different channels. Those channels will introduce the friction losses and the dampening characteristics will change based on the frequency or the speed of our vibration. Inside of it, we have a very interesting way. This is the actuator bit. This is allowing us to bypass the main chamber, which would be that one, and go on the second chamber. This is this was like a filled rubber case. I cut it in the first instance to see what is inside. This was bypassed by that, uh, which is commanded, which is controlled by applying a vacuum over there. Until now, if we take a look from a how many parts construction we have. We would have this element, we would have the plastic case in which they would apply this rubber bit. After that rubber bit, we have the tunnel system, we have the cavity system. So rubber, plastic case, tunnel system, this will go in and will clip on the lower bit. After that, this element has its matching surfaces and goes on top. This one will be going nicely on the top bit. And I'm imagining that they are placing this, which has some tabs over there, which will match this little bit. It will be placed on a holder. The last bit of the process will be this edge being stamped and securing the assembly together. I hope that this video was helpful. Don't be a Grinch, show some appreciation, maybe a like, maybe a subscribe. If you want to work with me on different projects, get in touch using our social media website or send a pigeon, do some smoke clouds. Hopefully you found it useful and you learned something.